All right. I know you read the thumbnail. I know you know what the title is. I'm not going to beat around the bush. We're going to talk about the worst game I've ever played. I'm just kind of glad that I actually get to review a bad game on this channel, and I don't mean bad like Azul Stained Glass of Sintra, I mean pure shit, just god awful. <laughs> the name of the game is Pantone, and yes, I did color match my nails to the board game review again. Um, thankfully they were the same color, so I didn't have to repaint them. <laughs> so this game actually came out on uh, Jess and I's three year anniversary back in 2018. So the game is based after the company, Pantone, the uh, color theory swatch maintenance people. <laughs> and with this game being about color theory and just being the amazing artist that she is, I had to get this game for our anniversary. So imagine my surprise when this game that I bought for our anniversary to play together is pure garbage. There just isn't enough like care, detail, or thought really put into this game. So making categories like piece review and general thoughts um, isn't really how this video is going to go. Instead, I just wrote down some points that I have right behind the camera. Um, and I'm just going to uh, rant for a couple minutes, and you guys are going to hear it. You're going to hear about the worst board game I've ever played. I will just start out with the description that's from the publisher's website. Just, you know, stop me or tell me when this starts to sound like a uh, unique or some sort of multi-level marketing scheme. <laughs> When we are children, there is a feeling of wonder and accomplishment that comes from visual recognition, being able to identify someone or something with just a look. Pantone, TM, the game, recaptures this feeling in a competitive and fun game in which players try to recognize characters from pop culture who are represented only by abstract arrangements of colors. The colors are inspired by Pantone, TM, the world's leading color expert. When you are the artist, capital A, you choose one of your character cards and design a representation of that character using only color swatches. When one of the other player guesses your creation, you both score points. If no player can guess the character during a round, a hint is given at the start of the next round. Each character card lists four hints, with each one reducing the number of points awarded to both the artist and the player who guesses the character. The winner is the player who has the most points after each player acts as the artist, again capital A, three times. Game designed by Scott Rogers. Okay. Uh, also, it says oh, Booster Pack 1 available now. I don't know why the fuck you buy a Booster Pack for this game. Oh my god, I can't even explain it. Um, so I'm going to have some footage up while I'm going through the rest of this. Uh, this game basically comes with... Oh, I'll do like a miniature piece review. This game comes with 60 cards uh, that you can arrange to make some sort of Minecraft-esque, blockish picture of a pop culture character. Um, that's it. This is just the superhero cards, and this is the gamer cards. This is from half the deck. I literally didn't have the willpower to go through the rest of the deck and separate everything out. This is half of the cards that they give you. Not only do I hate um, pop culture references in things like board games, um, this is just a serious design flaw because it ages poorly. Um, for example, take Bill Cosby or um, the Trump board game. Trump is also in this game. There's a Donald Trump card. So now that you have your severely dated references, you have to assemble these color swatches to make the color squares look recognizable. I know I said that we have 60 cards to do this, but you actually have 15 colors four times each. Despite being a game about color theory, this is a surprising lack of color diversity. Can you tell what this is? It's Damn Daniel. You can tell it's him by the white vans. How about this one? It's Ellen. You can tell because she's here hanging out with known war criminal and friend George W. Bush. Okay, okay, okay. One more. What? You're telling me that you don't know what this is? <laughs> okay, let me give you a hint, TM. It's a better thing that you can do with your time. You can do it with your partner. It's... it's Paggle. It's... it's Paggle. So the entire game is based around uh, your opponents being able to guess what your character is. This, more often than not, is uh, totally reliant on the people that you're playing with to know the same characters that you do and piecing together the same square representations of them. Uh, since your points are based on how well people can guess what it is, this naturally leads to people not guessing correctly even when they know the answer. Like, seriously, who thought of this? <laughs> All you have to do is get yours guessed correctly, and you can win. 
if other people are earning less points but people are still guessing on your points, you're going to intentionally sabotage them. If this is truly a competitive game like Scott Rogers designed, you wouldn't... You'd run into this problem every single game. Because of pop culture, this game also isn't one that you can even play with people from other generations despite how easy it is. You think my mother knows what a fucking ham taro is? Fuck no. <laughs> Don't even try and be clever or get a single distinguishing detail in there because no one will know what the fuck you're trying to do nine times out of ten. It's just going to confuse people. The plus side is, is that there are actually six blank cards that it comes with so you can write your own. If there were more than this, this would probably be a better game um, because then I wouldn't have to use their suggestions. Games usually last around 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, online it says you can play 2 to 20 players, uh, simply because this game is so bare bones that it doesn't really have a restriction. It's just as many people as you want. <laughs> there's there's nothing that prevents you from having a 21st person in there, right? Um, not that you're, you know, whatever, it's fucking 2020. You're not gonna have fucking be with more than 20 people. If you're more than, with, if you're playing this game and there are more than 20 people around you, you deserve to get whatever sickness is coming to you. <laughs> Uh, Board Game Geek, which I don't really like to reference because it's a lot of really random community votes from people who happen to um, put money into the game already, usually. Um, I don't really trust it, but it, the community suggests that four players is the best playing size. I suggest zero. Other unfortunate souls who own this game also suggest that you're only going to be playing with three to five players. Anything else is a bad idea. Speaking of which, um, I actually looked at some of the reviews on Board Game Geek because I, I wanted to feel validated in my absolute hatred for this game. And most of the reviews just ev relate everything back to Pictionary because it's about as deep as Pictionary, except with pop culture references. <laughs> Imagine if you got to play Pictionary, but you also couldn't draw. That's what this is. You can't, you can't speak unless you're giving a hint or saying yes or no that they got it right. And you can't draw. You're just using color swatches. Oh, the color swatches? Oh my god. The color swatches, in case you haven't fucking noticed, they have this white rectangle at the bottom that says Pantone, TM. The card game. <laughs> the movie. The book. Uh, and on every single card, there is all the copyright information for Pantone on each color swatch. In fact, the instruction manual for this game, because I just read out how to play it to you at the beginning, right? Um, the instruction manual for this game is not a manual. It's a single page that is front and back. The front page tells you everything I've already told you. The back page is just a credits list. Because how do you think they got the rights to put Mickey Mouse in a pop culture board game? <laughs> right? They have all the Disney princesses. They have every single superhero you can fucking think of. It's just like, it's just copyright credits. That's the entire back page. <laughs> One reviewer actually said that he bought this for $10 because it was on sale in November, and then he sold it a couple months later. I don't know who he pawned it off to, um, but we're done. <laughs>
I hate it. Message me, and if you pay for shipping, I'll fucking send it to you. Um, from this point on, I'm going to be using Pantone as the baseline comparison. I'm not actually, like, giving it a 1 out of 10 is just whatever, right? It means nothing. I'm saying that when I'm comparing something that's this low, or something that's bad, I'm comparing it to Pantone. So if you see anything that's like a 2 or a 3, I mean it's barely better than Pantone, which is a game I hate. I cannot make that clear enough. I loathe this game, and if I had a little bit more time or, um effort that I wanted to put into this video. I would have probably ended this video with me burning it in the outro. Just it burning would have probably been more satisfying than playing the game. <laughs> Ugh, I didn't enjoy this. Why did you make me review this game? <laughs> the game for this review is decided via a poll on my Twitter. Uh, there's a link in the description that links to the newest poll right now. So if you're interested in making me miserable again, please go ahead and vote on whatever you think is going to be the worst. <laughs> Are you one of the forlorn losers that also <laughs> owns this game? Uh, tell me your worst memory of this game down below. Have you watched all the other board game reviews? Uh, check them out on the uh, Octavian board game review playlist that I have set up. Uh, I can say that with confidence, every other board game on there is better than this one. <laughs> no matter this past, present, and future tense, whenever you're watching this video, whatever other board game you encounter on there is going to be better than this one. <laughs> well, thanks for making it to the end of this Forsaken video, and I'll see you in the next one.